Welcome, welcome. I don't know why I said that, but today we are doing some simple gravity inside of Pico 8. Here I have my little robot guy and he can move back and forth, but he's not falling down to the ground on my little platformer thing. So there's probably a lot of ways to do gravity. I feel like this is one of the more robust ways, but it still keeps it pretty simple. And the basic idea here is we're gonna take our robot guy and we're going to apply gravity to him every frame. And so he'll fall at a certain speed. And we're also going to look at the pixels right below him, right below his feet, and we're gonna test what tile those pixels are over. And if they're over a ground tile that would stop him from falling, then we're going to basically cancel out the gravity each frame. So how does it work? Well, here, just a tour of my code. We have a table here setting up our player class. It's just a container that holds a few variables, an X and a Y position, a direction position for X, J for jump, which we aren't gonna use in this tutorial, and a flip, which is a Boolean to turn him back and forth. I also have a couple gravity collision things here, which we'll talk about in a minute. I have a gravity variable and a collision variable, which we'll talk about in a minute. We have our horizontal movement code and we're just drawing our character and our map to the screen. So, so far we can move back and forth, but he isn't falling down. So the first thing that we can do is just apply the gravity. So let's go down here and I'll say apply gravity. And we're just gonna take the player, player's Y position and add gravity each frame. You could also just say plus equals one, but I already have a global variable set up for gravity, which is up here and at just equals one. So now if I play this, he falls down into oblivion forever, bye. But what we want him to do is to stop on the ground. So kind of a really simple way to do this would be to only apply the gravity if he's not hitting the ground. If we say if mget, which is a function to get a tile from our map, if mget player.x comma player.y divided by eight on each of these, because we're going to divide the pixel values by eight and that'll give us the tile coordinates. If that equals one, so we're basically asking if the player is over this tile, which is tile one, then actually let's have it not equal one. So we can say tilde equals one. So as long as that's not one, then apply the gravity. So save, run, and he'll fall down, but then he'll fall down kind of into the ground, which is sort of what we want but we actually wanna test if it's right below his feet. So again, what we could do is say maybe player y plus seven. We'll just put those in parentheses here. Save, run, and now look at that. I mean, that actually works pretty well. That works pretty well. So I mean, we could leave it like that. That's really simple. Look what happens. He can go over here and look, he's kind of floating in space. And then I go this way and I don't quite go off the edge and he falls down. That's because what we're doing is we're sampling if he's over a tile from this point right here, which is not even under our real character. It's in the upper left-hand corner of our sprite. Okay, so I'll just put a pink dot here in our sprite. Oops, it's actually right here. I'll put a pink dot in our sprite. So if that pink dot is over that tile, we're okay. But as soon as it's not, he falls down. The sprite flipped there, but you get the idea. So one thing, again, we could do is add a little bit to player X. So maybe to plus three, save this. And now his feet work pretty well. Go over here. And now if we go off this side, he falls, but it's a little early. And so it sort of works. It's a little better, but he kind of falls falls through it still. So actually a little better idea would be to sample two different points, one for his left side and one for his right side. That's especially helpful if we have a little wider character here too. So I have a couple of variables set up in my character, g1x, g2x, and gy. And these are just values that count certain offsets from our character. Okay, so three, four, and seven should be one, two, three, which would be in line with his left side of his foot, and four would be on the right side of his foot, and then seven would be down here right where his feet are. So here where it's blue, that's exactly Exactly where we're going to test to see if he's colliding okay so we'll use these values and test if those pixels are over our map tiles so let's say instead of three player dot g one x and player y this would be player dot g y that just makes it easier we'll just replace those because it's easier to change these than to go in our crazy code later so we want to test if that's a thing but we also want to test so or if this other one g2x okay so we have this big long thing now and now it's going to test each foot so i just can barely go off the edge here if i go this way i turn this way just barely go off the edge there. So let's make it a little nicer. 
we're going to do some proper collision detection instead of just kind of only applying the gravity if he's not touching something. So the first thing let's do for every frame is let's remember his current Y position, all right? So we'll say local LX for, or LY, which is going to be his last Y position, so player.y. So we're kind of saving that to a variable. Then let's apply our gravity, okay? Now let's pick our sample points. Let's just make a couple of variables here. Let's do C1x for collide1x, and that's going to be this right here, player x plus g1x. This is like ground 1x, like what's going to be touching the ground in our character. And let's do C2x. And that's going to be kind of the same thing, except for we're adding G2x. Let's actually just get rid of this. And let's do CY equals player dot Y plus player dot G Y. Okay. So this is just the coordinates for where we are going to test. So right now he should just fall through the world. Let's go ahead and draw out these points just so it's a little easier for us here to understand this. Um, we're going to say P set, which just makes a pixel a certain color. And we're going to say C one X comma C Y. And we're going to make that color eight, which is red. So now you can see where we're testing. It's red right on his feet. Okay. And let's also do this for the other side. Let's do C two X. See why? There we go. So now his feet are red because that's where we're testing for this collision. And actually, we want this one one down a little bit. So GY, let's make GY eight. So now it's right under his feet. Okay. It's nice to just have these pixels to kind of visualize things because then everything just makes kind of troubleshooting this a little bit easier. Okay. Now we have our sample points. Let's check if we're colliding. Check if colliding. So we're going to start with if mget, which is checking what is at a certain coordinate on the map. And we're going to do C1x divided by 8, comma CY divided by 8. So that's going to give us the coordinates for each one of these. So if we fall on this one, it's going to give us 4, 8, 5, 8, 6, 8, and so on. And if that equals 1, or if the other one equals 1, see 2x. So basically, if either of those red pixels are over one of these ground sprites, then we're going to do something. What are we going to do? We're going to set a global variable collide, C-O-L, as true. And if they're not over those sprites, we'll say call equals false. Forgot to then. So now all we're doing is checking if that collision is true or false, but we're not actually doing anything if it is. Okay. Let's do a couple more lines here. So if, if colliding, move player back up. That's what we want. So if collide equals true, you could also just say if, if col like this, then player.y equals ly, which remember is our last, before we did any crazy gravity or anything like that, we're just remembering where the player was in this ly. So if we collide, we're just going to move it back to the before times, the good old times, before it collided. Let's see if this works. It falls down, boom, there we go. And now he's colliding, look at that. That's cool, that's cool, pretty neat. And actually he's hovering above the ground. So I think maybe we were right setting this GY to seven because in this case, when he falls down, that tests every frame if he can fall down some more. And yeah, that's really nice. So there's a couple different ways to do gravity, kind of depending on how complicated you want to get. There's other little issues that we could fix and deal with. We can still kind of get stuck on the sides like this, which we could fix with some kind of horizontal collision. But that's the basic idea. As you check a certain point on screen based on your character position, and it's kind of offset to be the width and the height of your character, and if you're over a certain tile, you could also make this uh, check the tile for a flag. Then you either stop applying the gravity or you move him back up every time you apply the gravity. Either way, it works. I hope you enjoyed exploring that with me. And I hope you have an awesome day. If you watched this far, well, just go ahead and leave a like on the video. Let me know. All right? Okay.